Hello, this is Scott Buceno, editor of telecoms.com, and I'm delighted to be speaking to Niall Norton of Amdocs. So Niall, the topic for our conversation today is automation and AI, artificial intelligence. So I just want to get straight into it and, and ask you, obviously from your Amdocs perspective, what are the most common challenges that network operators face when they're implementing automation in their networks? Hey Scott, um, yeah, it's, it's a really good question. First of all, the business case is the very first, first and foremost piece. Nobody wants to kind of go through all of the pain that comes with any amount of change unless the, the payback is very good. Um, but presuming you have a positive business case around it, um, and you're looking at the benefits typically arising from increased efficiencies, lower costs to serve, particularly if new services being rolled out, um, you first of all have an end-to-end -end chain of different network elements inside a uh, inside any, any any service delivery. So you've got independent kind of domains that actually need to come together, uh, and they need to be orchestratable or instructed to do certain things, um, you know, in tandem. And that's uh, that's a big big kind of uh, change. So a common kind of environment to allow different applications to talk to each other automatically. You then need a, a, a you know an AI capability to actually look at at least correlation of different elements and make decisions or have a rules engine associated with that. So if my network is conject, congested, reroute it in some kind of intelligent way. So you need some kind of intent intelligence about what it is you're trying to do. And, and typically, there it's a very macro level view I'm giving you, but that's typically the kind of uh, uh, infrastructure related challenges that are there none of which are obvious or easy to uh, to answer, which is why these things have taken up quite a while. Yeah, it does seem, I mean, obviously I'm no expert on this stuff, but it does seem incredibly complicated in so much as you're, you're not just looking to introduce, for example, a new software module or, or even a whole new like BSS system or something like that, but a whole sort of like computing paradigm uh, on top of everything you've got there. Um, and then, of course, you know, within a, as you all know, only too well, within an operator, there are loads and loads of different sort of uh, silos, I guess, of, of technology and software. And a lot of them, you know, and, and they don't all get um, updated at the same time. So a lot of them are dependent on quite sort of legacy, perhaps outdated systems. So how do you, how do you manage that? How do you create automation across all those different domains? Yeah. First of all, you, you, you know, you eat the elephant one bite at a time. And I suspect what we're actually seeing in reality is, is that uh, operators are taking discrete markets, like an enterprise market, like a government market, um, rather than taking on the big enchilada of, of the consumer market that they serve. Um, and they're looking to perfect it in one place and then move it into the next place and the next place. So I, I, I don't think it's a, a an overnight transformation of entire network. I think it's too risky. Um, the second thing is that, and this is a, a nice part of the delay really in, in, in innovation or implemented innovation in the last couple of years is that uh, moving uh, applications, software applications off hardware or data centers into a cloud is, is probably a good idea from a flexibility perspective, but it, it actually is also a gateway enabler towards this end state of, of uh, automated network because if you can scale a, an application up and down, um, and you simply add APIs on top of it so that these applications can talk to each other, then the next thing you add on is intent, uh, you know, intent driven kind of orchestration, decision making powered by increasingly clever versions of AI. And then the last piece of it is how do you make sure that the software at each element can be upgraded in service, can be CI CD improved, and so on and so forth. And, and when you actually have all those elements together, um, which is done as a series of different programs, each with its own business case, you can then make, uh, you can then hit that end, that end state. So it's a slow process because it's very complicated. It has, you know, human issues, training people, redeploying people, people who've typically been working with physical inventory or physical assets for many, many years, are now moving into a virtualized world, which is the one that we're most familiar with. The, the next generation of having um, applications properly be able to talk to each other with defined APIs has been slow and painful, but it's 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 now it's now with us. Uh, 
the intelligence behind making decision making is one that people are going to be very cautious of from a security perspective, from a bias perspective, and various other other factors that come into it. But the train is well and truly leaving the station, so it is a it's a pretty exciting time. Great. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Well, that was really interesting. No, it's great to speak to you again. Thank and you, thanks Scott, a lot for your time. Very good.